Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiskey Central. If you're new here, my name is Shayla, and today I'm reviewing the bottle that my patrons voted on, which is the Port Charlotte 10 Year Heavily Peated. Also, just wanted to say, I got a little dental procedure done, I have stitches in my gums. So, if my mouth looks weird, or if you see stitches in my mouth, that's why. With that being said, let's get into the review. So I don't have any history for you today, but if you want to skip around to other parts of the video, there's timestamps in the description box below. And if you enjoy whiskey reviews, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new videos. So I covered most of the Bruclati history in my classic Lottie video. I'll link it in a card up here. Bruclati is very proud of their Port Charlotte. They're trying to make every part of the whiskey making process done on the island. 42% of the barley is from Isla, and it will soon be malted there as well. It's distilled, matured, and bottled on Isla. Alright, so let's get into the details of this whiskey. This bottle will run you about $70. It's owned by Remy Contro, and it's located on Isla in Scotland. It's made from 100% Scottish-grown malted barley, 42% of which is from Isla. It's peated to 40 parts per million, so it's in between Laphroaig and Lagavulin technically. But PPM is kind of a misleading number, because that's the parts per million phenols in the barley before production but fermentation, distillation, and maturation all play a part in how peaty the final product will taste. It's aged in 65% first fill American whiskey barrels, 10% in second fill American whiskey barrels, and 25% in second fill French wine casks. And it's non-colored and non-chill filtered. All right, well, I'm gonna pour a dram of this, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and I'll be right back. A few moments later. All right, I've let this open up for about 10 minutes. Let's go in for a nose. So this has calmed down a lot. When I first had this, it was on a Patreon live stream, and it really kind of like punched me in the face with Pete. It was pretty intense, but as my patrons let me know, it calms down after a little while. So the next time I had it was actually in a blind flight, and I couldn't tell what it was. I was like, it's got this like bacon meatiness and kind of coastal vibe, but it doesn't seem as peated as Port Charlotte, and that's just because it calmed down with a little bit of air. So if you don't like the first sip, Give it a little bit of time, try to let it get past the shoulder, and it should be better. So yeah, it's still an intense nose, but it's not overpowering. Get a little bit of salt. There's kind of like a lemony citrus in here. And then I get some dried fruits, like maybe apricot, apricot. And then I get a nice kind of sweet caramel, probably from that oak cask. And then the next kind of part, I kind of break it down into parts when I'm smelling it, but this part kind of is like Isla to me. It's, you've got this kind of seaweed thing going on, a little bit of, like, it sounds weird, like fir trees or pine trees, but kind of like this forestiness. That sounds really weird, but forestiness. And then I get this briny kind of peppery, maybe even shellfish kind of note. And then it's pretty earthy as well, probably just that peat, but a little bit of earthiness. And then the next thing I get is kind of like tea and tobacco mixed together, like this kind of tea tobacco note. I also get flint, which sounds kind of weird, but I have this little aroma kit and flint is one of the things. And I was trying to figure out what the note was in here. I was like, I have no idea what this is. It's flint. <laughs> so it smells like flint get a little bit of honey in here as well. Like there's some sweet elements going on even even kind of underneath the, the peat. And then I get a little bit of tar, like tar, iodine, peat. They kind of go together, but kind of that, that sort of thing. And then when I was on the Patreon stream, someone mentioned hot sand. I can't remember who it was, but somebody mentioned hot sand and I cannot get it out of my head, so it smells like hot sand. I don't know if that's because somebody told me or because it actually does, but hot sand. <laughs> All right, let's go on the palette. Cheers, guys. Mm. So the first thing I get is this bacon meatiness, which I know sounds kind of weird, but in a good way, bacon meatiness. And then it kind of is like this oceany iodine kind of thing going on. And then sensation-wise, I would say it's sweet, 
a little bit sour and a little salty. Yeah, it kind of tastes like flint smells. If that makes sense. There's this kind of smoky kind of note. And but then there is a little bit of sweetness. You get some caramel and some vanilla. There's a little bit of oak in there as well. And then obviously you get some peat. Let's go for another sip. Cheers. Yeah, it's really intense. I think that's one of my favorite things about peat is kind of the texture and the grip that you get on the palette. It's got a really nice texture. I'd say long finish. The peat's kind of hanging on. Yeah, this is a great dram, so I'm gonna finish it up and I'll be right back with my recommendation. This is a wonderful whiskey. I really love it, but I haven't had a lot of peated whiskey, so I'm not really sure where it lands compared to Laphroaig or Lagavulin, but so far I'm enjoying this dram. If you have a good chunk of money burning a hole in your pocket and this doesn't have enough peat for you, you could try the next in the Burclati range with Octomore. There are also some different versions of Port Charlotte, like Isla Barley, the MRC01, which is finished in Bordeaux casks, and the MC01, which is finished in Marsala casks. I don't have enough points of reference for peat just yet, so I asked the lovely Roy over at Aquavite for a couple of quick recommendations. So thanks, Roy, for the next couple of ideas. If you want to branch out from Port Charlotte, you could try something like the Lechic 10. It's from the Isle of Mole, but it uses Isla peat. You could also try a Kilhoman Macir Bay or Loch Gorm, or a Bunahabin Moynya or Tochekada. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Whiskey Central. Next week I'll be reviewing Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Batch C920, so if you don't want to miss out, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave it a like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Hopefully that is good enough because I can't do it anymore. We'll see how this goes. It's gonna be a train wreck, probably. And 10%. Ugh. 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 In the barley before produ production. Scotland. A little bit of cork in my life. Okay. A nip. A nip is all you need. Okay. Oh boy, I did the Elijah Craig before this one because I was like, this is too peaty and it's going to mess up my palate and I won't be able to make notes for the Elijah Craig. So I did the Elijah Craig first, but I had to sip a lot of Elijah Craig and now I'm paying the price because I'm trying to make this video and it's like, no, I'm tired. <laughs> I've had too much alcohol already, so, <laughs> okay.